In algebra, we've learned how to solve linear inequalities, compound inequalities, and linear equations. Now, for today, we're going to learn how to solve absolute value equation. Now, we know that all numbers, whether it's positive or negative, if it's inside the absolute value symbol, it's going to turn into a positive. And the reason why a number, when evaluated inside the absolute value, is always positive is because the definition of absolute value is the distance between your number from zero. So it's always going to be positive because it represents distance of a number from zero. Now in our equation for example number one, we have to solve absolute value of x plus 5 is equal to 3. Now the process or steps in solving absolute value equation is pretty simple. Whenever you have an equation similar to this one wherein you have an absolute value equal to a number, you have to split it into two wherein you have x plus 5 is equal to positive 3 and the other set of equation will be x plus 5 equal to negative 3. So you need to make sure that you are solving it for positive number and for its opposite. So if you solve for the x value of the first set of equation, we subtract 5 on both sides and we'll get x equal to negative 2. And for the second set of our equation, if we have x plus 5 equal to negative 3, x will equal to negative 8. So we have two values of x for our absolute value equation. And both numbers will be true if you plug it into the equation. So let's say I chose negative 8 and replace x by negative 8. And if I evaluate the equation, it should be equal to 3. And it's true on my solution right here. So if x is equal to negative 8, you plug it into x and you'll have negative 3 and absolute value of negative 3 is equal to positive 3. Also, if I plug it into x equal to negative 2, which is in this e equation, so we have negative 2 plus 5 is equal to 3, and x is equal to, or the absolute value of 3 is also equal to 3, therefore, both numbers for the values of our x's, which is negative 2 and negative 8, will be true for our absolute value equation. Now, moving on to number 2, if I have absolute value of x minus 2 equal to negative 7, and I need to solve for x, I need to split it into 2. One is for negative 7, and the other one is for positive 7. So for the first set, x will be equal to negative 5, and the second set will be x equal to positive 9 by solving for the value of, value of x. So if you'll notice, we'll always have two values of x whenever we're solving for the absolute value equation. Now for this example, we're going to use multiple steps to be able to solve for the value of x in an absolute value equation. So for the second example, I have 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3 is equal to 10. Now, most of you would most likely distribute 2 to x and 3 to be able to find the value of x. However, in an absolute value equation, you cannot perform the distributive property. So what you need to do is to eliminate 2 by dividing both terms by positive 2. So we have here 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3 is equal to 10. To get rid of 2, we have to divide both sides by 2. So we'll end up with an absolute value equal to a number. Remember, you cannot distribute your number inside the absolute value and also you cannot split your absolute value into two if your absolute value equation still has a number right next to or around your absolute value expression. So in this case, we cannot split into 2 yet. We need to get rid of 2. So we'll end up with absolute value of x plus 3 equal to 5. And now that we only have the absolute value expression and this side of your equation, we can now split them into 2 and we'll have two sets of equation. One is for positive 5 and the other one is for negative 5. And solving for x, we have x equal to 2 and x equal to negative 8. Now for the third example, we have 3 plus 5 times the absolute value of x minus 2 is equal to 13. So just like what we did in example number 2, we cannot split this equation into 2 because we still have 3 and 5 by the absolute value. So we need to get rid of them first. So to do that, we need to get rid of 3 by subtracting 3 on both sides. And afterwards, we're going to get rid of 5 by dividing 5 on both sides. So now that our absolute value is just by itself, 
equal to a number, now we can split them into 2 to solve for the two values of x that we have. So we have x minus 2 is equal to 2, and x minus 2 is equal to negative 2. So the two values of x for our absolute value equation will be x equal to 4 and x equal to 0.